How's it going everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're in Colorado and next to me I have Jason from Overland Eats. What are we doing today, man? Well, we're out here with my buddy Scott from Big Ed's Fishing. We're gonna do a little ice fishing and then uh, cook up some lunch. So it ought to be a good time. Let's do it. All right, let's get to it. to catching us some lunch, so uh, let's get to fishing. I'm about to be right here. Whoa. All right, there we go. I broke my line. Like yeah. Little rainbow trout. Set him. Go back up, you gonna get him. Moving steady, right there, we're gonna go up and it's perfect. That's awesome, my boy. That is go. awesome, man. Dude, you got one. Look at that, man. All right, man, let's do it again. Keep an eye on that one. Hit him. Nice, you got a salmon. Ready to go. These are, uh, they're called kokanee salmon. So, so far, what do we have? So, so far, we have rainbow trout, which is this fish right here. This one right here? This one right here. And they're named that way because you can kind of see the, you know, just the color spectrum. It goes really dark down to the to the light and they have this real pronounced lateral line here. This right here is a coconut salmon. Um, and this one's a male also. Oh, you just got hit right there. He's a big one. Oh, oh, we got a big boy here. Jeez, I've never, I've never had a ice, uh, fish fight like that while ice fishing. Yeah, that guy's, that guy's putting up a pretty good. You'd see him, like see him moving Yeah, here he comes. So be real careful with him, just right in there. So you can get his head up. Oh, dude, nice char. Oh, my God. No way. Dude, that's a nice char. That is a big, big char. Dude. All right, guys, so we got a beautiful Arctic char here, one of the uh, most rare fish in the lower 48. This is a nice size, too, for Lake Dillon. We're going to go ahead and uh, release him back in there to go make some more babies. See you, buddy. Hey, yo, fish on. Ready. All right, man, what do you think? First time ice fishing. Dude, it's been an incredible experience. I had a blast. How many did I get, like three? You four? got plenty. I think we for sure got enough for lunch, so I'd say let's get these guys cleaned up and then uh, head up the pass and get to cooking. All right, let's do it. Let's go. We're gonna clean these up and prep them for the table. Um, basically, you gotta remove the guts, pretty easy process on a trout. Come right under here and you slit right here, right under there, and then you come right in the butthole. You're gonna slit right through the butt, move on up, come right up under the under the jaw, clean that out, then just grab the jaw, pull. Out come the guts. Take your knife. They have a bloodline. I'll slit it. We want to clean these out, get these nice and clean. Um, especially if you're just going to go from from here to the table, get rid of that bloodline. That thing's ready to go. Yeah, well, we got uh, our limit on uh, fish here, so we're going to head up the pass and uh, get ready to cook some lunch. Got to get fire going. It's cold out. So right now I'm using the shovel to make some space. This is the easiest little fire pit to use. First things first, get a fire going. So I like to put a little bit of cowboy charcoal on, uh, on the fire because it just keeps the whole thing super hot and it keeps you from running out of wood too fast. You know, a little more like twine or something. It's a nice little setup, yeah, it's a cool thing. Oh my God, I cannot wait to eat. No, man, I'm hungry. We got both uh, fish that we just caught over in Dillon Reservoir and some Gulf shrimp that I picked up the other day. First thing we're gonna do is make some uh, New Orleans style barbecue uh, Gulf shrimp. So like any good dish, 
This one starts with butter. So we're gonna throw a knob of butter right into that Dutch oven. Let it melt down real quick. All right, so in just a second, we're gonna take a couple of cloves of garlic here. I think this is three clove, four cloves of garlic. Toss that in while our butter is browning. So, you know, campfires are kind of unpredictable or can be super unpredictable. So you're never 100% sure what temperature you got here. You always wanna be careful about burning your butter. You can use white wine to deglaze the, uh, the skillet or the pan anytime you're, uh, you're worried about that. And it'll just kind of clear everything off the bottom, make sure nothing's sticking. And we're gonna do that a couple more times because white wine goes great in this. Just make sure you're not adding too much or too little of any ingredient, right? I do most of this stuff by just looking at it. So I'm gonna go ahead and add some Tony Sachery's Cajun seasoning right now. And then stir that around a bit. Looks like this is cooking down pretty nice. So I'm gonna add a really, really healthy portion of uh, cracked black pepper. Lots and lots of black pepper. You can't add too much black pepper. While we're letting these flavors kind of meld together, right? We're at, so far we've got garlic, we've got some Creole seasoning, got plenty, plenty butter, a little black pepper. Ideally, you would have chopped basil and onions cooking down in here too. We're out here in the woods, right? We're, we're, this is typically something you do while camping. So we just got onion powder and basil leaves. So we're just gonna add a bunch of basil and a bunch of onion to this. All right, so everything's continuing to cook together. Now we're gonna add a critical, critical element of New Orleans style barbecue shrimp, and that is Worcestershire sauce. So if you were doing this at home, you put three or four tablespoons. We're not really measuring too much, so I'm just gonna give it about that much and call it a day. Just gonna add a little bit more red wine, make sure things are melding together nicely. White wine. White wine. Makes everything taste better, right? right. Can't be one. Probably don't want to put that in your video. Our French bread is uh, frozen solid. We left it in the back of the truck. So we're going to go ahead and thaw this out a bit. <laughs> All right, last thing we're going to do before we, uh, before we throw in our shrimp is we're going to add some fresh cut lemons to the mix. Starting to look good and smell even better. Now that's about ready for our shrimp. Best ingredient of all. Get your lemons all around there and get that shrimp soaking up that flavor. In a minute, we're just going to put the top on and let it slow simmer and let the shrimp soak up all that good flavor we put in. All right, so yeah, we've got our shrimp uh, simmering. It should be just about five more minutes so we start digging into those guys. Oh, dude, it's looking really good, man. What inspired you to start this? What inspired you to start Overland Eats? Uh, you know, really, I, I bought the Tacoma uh, about two years ago and um, never even had Instagram or anything until this summer. Uh, we've always eaten well out uh, while we're camping. And, what was uh, your uh, previous car before that? I was a big 911 guy. I was in the I was in the sports cars and oh, Porsches, nice. and uh, I moved out here. And realized I couldn't get anywhere with it, <laughs> any of the good camping spots, and so yeah, I picked up the Tacoma and uh, been, you know, I, I think I bought it with the lift and tires on it, but then uh, the addiction happened pretty quickly after that. So uh, that's awesome, yeah. man. And, and uh, where do you want to take this Overland Eats thing? I don't know. I think the thing I enjoy most is just feeding people and enjoying sitting around the campfire and talking. So uh, yeah, as long as people are hungry and want to come eat what I'm cooking, I'll, uh, I'll keep doing it. Cooking over a campfire isn't an exact science, and uh, that's kind of what makes it fun, you know? Everything tastes better when you cook it over a campfire, and uh, food cooked with friends is a, a time well spent. Definitely, man, I agree with that. Cooking is so accessible these days. Like, everybody thinks like, this, you know, you have to be a chef and it's this aspirational thing. But YouTube, man, you can learn everything on YouTube. I, I, wa I, I grew up watching Gordon Ramsay you know, cooking shows and, and learn how to cook via YouTube. Wow. All right, so guys. Normally I'm behind the camera <laughs> and now I get to experience Jason's amazing cooking. This is David Guys, former BC team member. First couple of bites, what do you guys think? Well, honestly, I think this is the best shrimp I've ever had in my life. It's like five stars. <laughs> so I'm, a, I'm a huge fan of seafood. Absolutely love it. Coming from Ecuador, it's one of our big things over there. Yeah. And dude, you absolutely killed it with this shrimp. Yeah, looks pretty good though. That is delicious. God bless America. Wow. The moment I've been waiting for. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, you certainly put the effort into cooking it. Um, all I did with these guys, salt, pepper, olive oil, fresh herbs, and then lemons tucked inside. We're gonna grill them up quick on each side and then eat them and roll. Do you really think I can go out there? Yeah, I'm gonna go out there. I think I see it. Where were you, in this area? Yeah, well, the GPS is telling me where it's at. Okay. Cool. I gotta get it quick, though. <coughs> I thought I was gonna die. Dude. I thought I was gonna die. I thought... So, huh? 
What happened was we wanted to get a drone shot of the scenery. The drone fell out in the lake. It was a it crevice was, in between us and the lake. It was massive. And we and, fell through it. And uh, we just kept sinking and our hands just kept going We didn't have inside. gloves on. We thought yeah. it would be a three minute little trek. It did not seem as gnarly as it suddenly became. Uh, it got to a point where I just could not feel any finger. Like, it, I couldn't even move my hand. We were not 15 feet from where we were cooking and hanging out. And we literally walked 15 feet away to see what the situation was and we both ended up in big trouble real fast. Mateo, here's the game plan, dude. What we're gonna do is head back up the pass. I'm going to get that drone. We got the ice shoes. We got the fire department's flashlights. They all uh, said if we're not back in an hour, they'll send the search party. What are you about to do, Jason? I'm going to the middle of the reservoir. The light on the drone is still on. It's a couple hundred yards out. It's flashing. I'm putting on the fire department snowshoes right now. I'm getting ready to go. Save us a thousand bucks and all the footage that we got for you guys. Yeah. If you feel like it's going south, you come back right back. I'll come right back. Drone. I don't I'll, I'll, all right, I'll come all right. right back. If you guys, I don't know if you can see it out there, but the light is on. I'm taking the cross country ski path to the lake and then walking on the lake. We should still take it with us, Jeff. So that's where the drone is beeping. And that is where Jason's at. All right, guys, well, this is where, without the proper gear, we got into a little trouble earlier today. Oh. Jason! Problem, problem! What? I'm coming back. Water? I'm wet. I'm coming back. It's over. It's over. I fell into a foot of water. I'm drenched. All right, all right. Come back, come back. Shoot, you guys. It's still blinking even. It's tormenting us. All right, Jason, so let me show you this uh, front runner utensil kit. Awesome. So this has helped me out whenever we go camping. You're able to keep all your utensils in one set. What do you think? Oh, I dig it. All right. Well, can I take some goodies out of here? Let's go ahead. Go for it. What do you awesome. Need? Yeah, I'm just going to finish getting these fish ready so we can uh, throw them on the fire. All right, let's do it. All right, cool. So next thing we're going to do is put a little oil on these fish, stuff them with the herbs, and get some lemons in them. There we go. All right. All right, so now we got these fish ready to go. We got a little salt and pepper on the inside, a little olive oil. I'm going to do the same thing on the outside. I got them stuffed with some thyme and some rosemary. And we're going to go ahead and throw them on the fire. Tough thing about fish is that, you know, they get really flaky if you're doing them right. And so you only get one shot at flipping them. We're going to eat these right off the grill, so it's not a big deal. But, um, but you really need to be careful about not even getting them too flaky and just follow them in pieces. And how do you know that they're ready? What, what are you looking for? We're looking that we can just pull, the, pull this back with a fork and eat it right off the bone. Oh, oh my gosh. Okay. God. Let's test and see if they're ready. Oh yeah, that's that's what you want right there. See that? It's just so flaky, it'll come right off. That's what you want, right there. I'd give it another minute, but just about there. All right, man, we've had these on about 10 minutes. Let's uh, let's go ahead and try this. All right, so we'll just pull back. Just pull it back and look. You just get close to the rib cage and you just pull it back. You see that? No bone. Yeah, there's definitely there's something, something about, about yeah. Something about eating uh, eating something that you catch or you come next season eating eating something that you go hunt for. Definitely rewarding. And you just come in here and grab it like this, and you pull with your teeth, and then you get it without the uh, bone. See? Baby, why don't you come in here and tell us what you think? That's all no bones? Yep. Is that camera on? Yeah, dude. Gonna get that shot? <laughs> this is really good. Amazing, right? Oh, dude. We got one more little treat for you, okay? These are American Wagyu ribeyes from Omaha Steaks. Super, super awesome cuts of beef. Um, they're just gonna melt in the mouth, and we're just gonna sear these off right on the sear plate. All I did was throw some salt on. That's one of the things that makes Wagyu so special is that it's got just incredible marbling throughout. So when all that fat renders down, that's just flavor. Here we go, first time trying Wagyu steak. <laughs> oh I'm gonna get that right there. See what you think. 
Mm. Wow. This cow uh, never worked a day in his life. He's uh, he's waggy. Cheers, boys. Cheers. You like mm. it? Mm. It's kind of like eating butter, it's right? It's butter. It's butter. It's meat butter. And it's like candy. You saved the drone. <laughs> 24 hours later, six inches of snow. We got the drone. Yes. Mateo almost died yesterday trying to get the drone back. And I'll show you right now, but there's a grid over there that we were making. I came back to take a break and give the snowshoes to Jason. He just randomly picked it up. Like we were, we were going in, in, in uh, circles and he stopped doing the grid and just randomly walked out to it and grabbed it. Dude, I'm so happy, man. Dude. And I just I looked at the bowl. I looked up and I said, Look at where you got it, dude. I'm gonna it's find this drone. The next day, after six inches of fresh powder, something inside of me said, dude, <laughs> as long as you just keep pushing, you'll find it. And uh, we did. Hey, I'm glad we did this instead of skiing today. But copper, we're coming for you tomorrow. <laughs> Time to go shred. Yeah. And now I'm gonna shred. Now we, so now we earned it. <laughs> All right, dude. We did it, man. Hey, thanks so much for coming out to Colorado. It was no, great having you. Thanks having you. Uh, here in the Rockies, had a great time, a little unexpected snow, but uh, if you like what you saw, come hit me up on Instagram or YouTube. We're just getting started over there at Overland Eats. Can you just take my outro? Uh, oh, I think I did. Go ahead, man. I'm, I'm sorry. Nice with you. If you guys like this video, make sure to hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe. Make sure to check out Overland Eats. I will see you guys in the next video.